On waterproofing a drone, you must have looked through lots and lots of YouTube videos. This is not a repeat of what they have shown you, but lessons I've learned from my real world experimentations. It's fun when everyone is cuddled up under the blanket on a rainy day. You can still head out like any other normal day and enjoy your flights. Things look different in rain. Like here, I saw the Kalang River flood when Singapore received the heaviest rainfall in 39 years. But it's frustrating when the lens gets blurred by the water blobs. And just when you thought you have waterproofed your electronics, you start getting these wavy lines. What we are out to achieve is to get this clear image, even after dipping in water. The tips shared aren't exactly in any order, so I would suggest that you watch the whole thing. First thing to remember is to waterproof your flight controller last. If you think your quad is going to be fully submerged in water, you will have to waterproof your USB port as well. Hence, tune your quad first. Only when you are satisfied with the tuning, then coat the whole thing. Don't worry, if you are using conformal coating like me, you can still dig the thing out with a pincer and toothbrush to regain access to your USB port. Another question that a lot of people have is how thick should the waterproofing be? Some tutorial videos were suggesting that you give it a thin coating. Frankly, it doesn't matter. Just load it. You won't get abnormal overheating issues. And yes, you do have to waterproof your camera. Otherwise, you get a blurry vision due to fogging from the inside. The only way to remove that is to open up the lens and let it air dry. Out of convenience, I just waterproof all my cameras. The best time to waterproof your camera is before you use it. The factory set focus is usually sharp, but you might just want to check it before coating. And based on my experimentations, you do have to coat the rim in front of the lens. I use a toothpick that I sharpened further using a blade and dip the tip of the toothpick very lightly in the coating fluid and go over the rim a few times. And yep, you do not need to waterproof the batteries. Used batteries get bloated, isn't it? It means air from the inside can't come out, so water can get in. So do you need to waterproof all connections? It's best that you do. In this case, I did not waterproof the two pins used for adjusting the camera settings, and it got triggered when it got wet. So a quick and easy way is to wrap blue tag around the connector. This way, you can easily get access to the connector when you need to. I use a 3-pin connector to enable me to swap different cameras on my quad and the waterproofing is pretty much the same, just use blue tag to wrap around the connector. Okay, so much about waterproofing the drone. Next is to share with you some real-world flight issues. Experimentations like these are done under ideal conditions and real-world is oftentimes never like that. While your drone is waterproof, the water that your drone is going to take a dip in might be full of leaves, vines, twigs, all sorts of stuff. Once the motor gets entangled, there's no way it can lift itself out of the situation. Another reality is that while kissing the surface of water and pulling out is not an issue, dipping in water at a distance away from yourself, you lose both video transmission and radio connection. So please do not imagine that if your quad takes a dive in a lake, you can fly it back to you. It's so not going to happen. But if you're close enough, well, you lose video transmission, but you still have radio connection to bring it back to you. Do note that crashing on water is just like crashing on any hard surface. The power surge might still kill your ESC. Next is just a suggestion. If you're going to build a quad to fly in rain, try to keep it minimalistic. In my case, I dropped the LED as well as the beeper. And finally, one last point. You have done everything correct. The drone is in water, it survives, it flies perfectly, lift off, and you get these water blobs on your lens. And no matter what you do, they are very, very persistent. They don't go away. So what can you do?
There's a water repellent chemical that they apply on windscreen of cars called Rain-X. Does it work? See for yourself. Mamma mia! Nothing beats having a clear vision. That's so sweet. Okay, enjoy flying, day or night, rain or shine.